So what happens is, yun nga, when you have water vapor running up against a mountain, especially a very high mountain, it starts getting cooler, it starts to condense, then it starts to rain. What happens on the other side, na ubus lahat ng water sa air, and it gets drier on the other side. That's why, yun nga, a lot of the deserts that we see all over the world, they usually have a huge mountain range, and that's what blocks the water from getting to these areas. So, yun nga, water stores heat. And this actually helps regulate our climate. It keeps, it keeps places from changing temperatures too fast because yun nga, it slows down the process of absorbing heat. It slows down the process of releasing heat. And because of this difference, we start to see how it affects the climate. During the day, water absorbs heat slowly, so it warms up slower. The land absorbs heat faster, so it gets warmer here, and since warm air rises and cool air takes its place, during the day, the wind usually comes from the sea. During the night, it's the opposite. The water has absorbed heat over the day. Now it's slowly releasing it during the night. The land, which has received the heat during the day, releases it quickly, so it's much cooler here on land. And the water is just releasing the heat slowly. So this is hotter, the water rises, then the cool air takes its place. So at night, wind flows in the opposite direction. It tends to flow in the opposite direction. <coughs> if you look at it at a larger scale, this happens uh, no, um, over geographical boundaries. So we are familiar with Amihan and Habaga makes you wonder why it happens when it happens, right? I think Amihan comes in November to April. So this is when this area is much colder because it's winter up here, right? And down here, it's much warmer because it's closer to the equator. So nangyayari dyan, Galing sa northeast yung hangin. Diba? Tapos, April to November, it's the opposite. This side is warmer, this side is cooler, the air goes the other way. And, yun nga, if the water gets too much heat, then we start seeing typhoons. So global warming is really serious because yun nga, all that energy is being stored in water and yun, when it's released we get extreme weather like typhoons. So climate change is not just about things getting warmer. It's about things getting stronger, winds getting stronger, um, yun, calamities like this getting worse. And finally, yun nga, water can come in different forms. If you have too much water vapor, it can also trap heat. Very similar to yun, the greenhouse effect. Okay, but this happens naturally. So I was wondering before, like, yun nga, we're in a hot, humid climate, a tropical country. How come it's so popular to eat outside, especially at nighttime? Well, it actually depends. If it's cloudy at night, it doesn't feel cooler at all. But when the clouds are gone, 
the night sky actually absorbs the heat radiating from the land. So it does make sense to you know, eat al fresco, especially at night, because you know, the sky, especially when it's not cloudy, it absorbs the heat that is released by our land. So overall, water is an important factor in regulating climate. It slows things down. It stores heat instead of, you know, instead of releasing it to the environment, it stores heat. And most importantly, water can also be found in living things, specifically plants. Like water, plants also regulate the climate. Since plants contain water, they have the qualities of water. In addition, they also convert sunlight and carbon dioxide into food. So besides storing the heat from the sun in its water content, it also converts the heat of the sun into food, into more plant material. That's why plants keep, keep our environment cool, right? And I think that is also a very good reason why people, normal people, want to have plants around them. Whether it's, yun nga, it's really doing its job, or it's just symbolic, like our, our habit of putting plants everywhere in our homes. I think innately we're thinking that the more plants we have, yun nga, the more comfortable or the more, the more predictable our lives will be. Plants can also provide shade and shelter. So here we see a typical plan. Placing plants on the sides of the building, which yun nga, uh, receives a lot of sunlight, like the eastern and western sides, could help protect our building from the sun, which is very important in our climate specifically because it's too hot and too humid. Plants also protect us from climate extremes. You may wonder, if all the plants do or trees do is block the wind, how come our, wind, how come our buildings aren't doing such a good job? I mean, we're building so many things, but yun nga, when we're hit by a typhoon, we're still, yun nga, we're still affected so much. Well, the difference between trees and buildings is trees are more flexible. Right? They sway with the wind. So they absorb all that energy from the wind. Our buildings aren't that flexible. In fact, they could redirect the wind. So we still get the same amount of oh no, intensity as if you know, there were no trees at all. And unfortunately, we are losing all of these resources. We're losing water, we're losing trees. All the areas that aren't green have no trees, right? So this is how we're affecting our climate. It's not just um, some large-scale effect that we're talking about. These elements that we see every day, they're affecting our climate little by little. And we're replacing all of these resources with concrete, with buildings, with pavement. So, instead of having plants and water absorb heat, we have concrete, which absorbs heat quickly, with, but then again, it also releases heat quickly leaving us with little time to adjust. So replacing trees with pavement actually heats up our city. So we start a vicious cycle. We then begin to rely more on our buildings 
to provide us with comfort.